Hello everyone and welcome to another lecture of PHP and MySQL. So we are learning or we learned in the last lecture how to install uh, the MySQL or the PHP MyAdmin uh, control panel and how to use it. But before that, I just want to tell you um, a very, very simple explanation of what a database is capable of. Okay, so any interaction that a user has with the web or with a website, any type of interaction can be stored on a database. So let's say type in something like uh, in Google search query here, everything that you type here will be stored on a database. And I can guarantee that Google has a, a very large database about your queries uh, throughout all your life. Um, so that's why they know so much and that's how they control basically all the queries in the world. Uh, it's a very, very powerful information and you can do the same on your website. So if you have a website or a web application, you can store anything you want or any interaction that the user has with your website either sending um, login information or register information or how many times the user access your website, what is the page that the user sees the most on your website, uh, how many times he spans on your website, how many clicks he does on your uh, website, who does he interact with. Basically everything that a user does on your website, you can store that on um, the MySQL database. And later you can, use, you can use that information for um, anything you want, okay? Nowadays, information is very valuable for ads and marketing. So make sure you create a, a cool or a very well-structured database for your web application. And obviously, depends on the web application or the website you, that you are creating, you'll be creating a different type of database for it. So if you are creating a simple, you know, store or simple website that sells uh, some products, um, maybe you only need uh, to store the the sales or the the prices. And you, and if you are thinking about uh, creating something really big like a social network like Facebook or uh, some large platform with a lot of users, you'll need a very, very well structured um, MySQL database with a lot of uh, tables and a lot of um, different configurations. Okay, but we'll get to that later on. Let's start uh, with the basics first. So let's go to localhost and PHP my admin. So here on the left side, you have um, some examples of databases. Okay, these are the databases that we have. So CityCool is a database. And then you have uh, CDs. And when creating names for databases or uh, tables, it should only contain letters, numbers, or um, if you want to use spaces, use the underscore, okay? Don't leave spaces in blank. You should also avoid using uh, names that SQL functions has or SQL terms. Also, the names of tables or databases should be treated as case sensitive. And basically, make sure you use names that you will remember and they are unique for you or for your project. Okay. So in order to understand the structure of a simple MySQL database, let's create a new one, a new database. Okay. Let's call this my first database. Okay, let's click create. And there it is, my first database. Okay, here you have it. Perfect. Now let's click my first database. Let's click there. Okay, now you need to create tables. Okay, tables are uh, where you store the different type of data or information. Um, for each table, you can put as many columns as you want. And in order for you to understand this, let's create a table first. 
So let's call this table users. Okay. Now users will have several information for each user, which will be the name, the email, the first name, the last name, uh, the password, etc. So let's create, for example, five columns. Okay. Let's click uh, go. Okay. We will get to this page where you have to give all this information to the database. So the first thing you're going to have is name and let's call the first, let's give it the name for the first column ID. The second, uh, let's put a uh, first name. And here, let's give a uh, second name or last name. In here, let's give it an email. And then you can type something like, yeah, we can give the password here. Okay. Now, for each type of information or data here, um, you have different types of configurations that you need to choose. Okay, so if it is, a, for example, a date or an email, you have to choose a different configuration. For ID, which is going to be a number, we will choose um, Varshar, which means various characters. Okay, so we have integer, which is the int, Varshar, text, and date. Okay, and then you have several other options here, but the most used options um, for now are date, text, Varshar, and integer. Okay, so for ID, let's use uh, the Varshar, which means various characters, numbers, or strings, and for the rest of it, you can use Varshar as well. Um, okay. Uh, because some people may use numbers and um, characters, strange characters for names and on emails as well. So Varshar for everything, password Varshar as well. Okay, cool. Uh, length values. Here's where you can um, give a limit of length uh, for the characters. Okay, so you can limit here and we can tie, for example, uh, limit. Let's type 100 for each one of them, which is pretty much, uh, or too much. Let's give it a 50. Okay, 50, 50 characters long. And remember this, because later on when you are creating um, PHP connections with uh, my admin or uh, MySQL, if you have a limit of 60 on your PHP script and you have 50 here, uh, it will cause problems. So remember they have 50 as a character limit in your database, okay? Now default, uh, let's give it, um, let's leave it none. Collation, uh, you can leave this uh, as it is. Attributes, let's leave it as it is. Uh, index, um, let's give it a primary key to the first one, which is the ID. This means that this is the main key uh, or the main identification for each user. Okay, so uh, you can also choose here AI, which is not uh, artificial intelligence, but it's um, auto increment. Okay, it will auto increment every time a user registers or sends a new information. Okay, so for each user, you have a different ID at all times. Then you have uh, here MIME type. This is for um, when you want to store files, uh, there are image files like PNGs or JPEGs. We'll see this later on, not now. This, we don't need it as well. We will check this later on. And I think we are done with this. You can put some table comments, partition definition. Okay, let's save this. Uh, 
Uh, incorrect column specified for column ID. Okay, let's change something here, which is causing problems. Instead of primary, let's leave it as uh, with nothing. Let's leave the auto increment and change the varchar to integer. Okay, let's go back and save this. Okay, now we are done. Perfect. So now we have uh, our database ready with one table only for users. Uh, and each user will have uh, the possibility to send this information or uh, to complete a form. And then we'll store all that information from the form with a first name, last name, email, and a password to this table, okay, using PHP. So let's click uh, my first database, let's click users. And then if you see, um, if you click users, you'll see columns and indexes, click columns. And there you have it. ID, uh, then first name, last name, email, and password. Okay, this is what we have to store from a form that we will later create on our website. If you want to put uh, some more fields into this table or our columns, you can uh, basically add here one column at the end of the table or at the beginning. We want at the end and after password and click go. Okay, so the name will be um, registration, registration date. So we know when the user registered. And here let's type uh, date, length, let's put 50 as well default none and uh, I think we are done yes okay let's save this okay let's go back to columns and there it is okay so this is all for now uh, and in the next lecture we'll continue with this um, little project see you guys later bye